have an announcement. Um, we have a booth that Dobbs has provided, and we're going to be giving out things and candy and this good stuff at the River Jamboree, May 4th. And if anyone wants to join us, it's from 11 to 3. Very good. That's May 4th. That's Saturday. Saturday. 11 to 3. We'll Saturday. be close to the street, so um, maybe it'll be easy to get in there. Very good. Everyone hear that? And she's just asking for an hour at a time. Hour at a time. Looking for volunteers to, to work an hour at a time at the booth at uh, uh, the, the river. The more the merrier. <laughs> Great opportunity for outreach, outreach, uh, Dobbs tells us, okay? Uh, any birthdays? I, I'm happy to announce that uh, my grandniece, Sarah Ellis Brown, has a birthday this week. Are there any others? You want a happy birthday? Why don't we? Proclaim to spread throughout the earth abroad the honors of thy name. We come to you, O Lord, in the quietness of this hour, in humble adoration for your mighty acts of creation and salvation. Thou who hast hung the stars in place and created all things that exist in the universe, yet you stoop to hear our prayer. We thank you that you are our God and that we are your children. And we are grateful for thy salvation through the blood of Christ our Lord. And we pray that your hand would be upon us and upon the affairs of all your children, O Lord. Be with those who can't be with us in this hour for sickness or other ailments. We just pray that your hand would be upon them. We pray, Lord, that you would be with our nation and help us in this time of blasphemy and confusion. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with all of your children. We pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. And we ask that you would have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us all, O Lord. Forgive us our sins and watch over us in this hour. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us turn to hymn number 384 as we stand to sing the first, second, and last verses.
please remain standing as we recite the Apostles' Creed found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I said, it wouldn't take long for me to uh, <coughs> make a mess of things. <laughs> I did overlook an announcement. Uh, Dance Memorial United Methodist Church will hold a call church conference on May 12th. The purpose of this meeting will be to vote on completion of the terms of an agreement between the trustees of Dance Memorial United Methodist Church and trustees of the Mississippi Annual Conference approved by a resolution at the special call conference of Dance Memorial United Methodist Church on March 10th, 2024. The meeting will take place in the Fellowship Hall and will and, and begin promptly at 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. All persons should be registered in their seat at starting time. All of those voting must be full members of the congregation. We don't want any half members. <laughs> members must be present in the bar at the conference at the time of the, the votes are cast. I don't know what in the bar is all about. Nevertheless, the voting will be done by special ballot supplied by the presiding elder of the conference. The vote must be at least 66 and two-thirds of those present and voting to be approved. No other business will be conducted at the conference. I felt obliged to share with you that announcement. It is, it is, it is in your bulletin. And we would encourage everyone's attendance on May the 12th. Prayer concerns. Have we any prayer concerns? How is Jet, your grandson? My grandson, Josiah Charles, is doing better. Thank you for that. Uh, they went, my family, my son and his family went on vacation to Clearwater. He came down with a bad cough and so forth. And they wound up taking him to the hospital in St. Petersburg or Petersburg. It turned out to be uh, Johns Hopkins Children's Hospital. What a great place to be. <laughs> and he was diagnosed with some type of uh, virus and they treated him there. He was in the hospital overnight. He was released and he is at home and he's doing better. Thank you. Thank you. For that. I, I, I thank you for your prayers and support. Yes. Nancy Schaefer is going to have surgery tomorrow. Nancy um, Schaefer. Yes, in the process of her recovery and healing from cancer. So okay, so we want to keep Nancy Schaefer in our prayers. Yes, ma'am. I got one more. Matt Nelson. Nelson. Chris and Anthony's nephew is in a bad boat wreck on the river yesterday and had to be oh. sent to South Alabama um, up at Thomas Bluff. And we have <coughs> prayers for him. He's a mess. Matt Nelson. Matt so he Nelson. was in the boat by himself. Another boat ran over the top of his boat. Oh, yeah, the propeller got him across the head. He's in his early 20s, but they're, they're going to do surgery today to plate his pelvis. He's got a bit of a head injury uh, and a few other things. And he's he is a he's South Alabama. He's in South Alabama. Mm -hmm. He started the same river and they moved him to South Alabama. Lord, we need to remember those. We want to also remember Nora Beecham. Uh, apparently, she's had to have a soldier, a shoulder replacement. Uh, sir. I, I have an update on that. Okay. She is with Tanya. Uh, she had the replacement, but she is uh, she can't do anything for herself, and she's in a bad way. So she is with Tanya in Pascagoula. I have the address. If anybody wants to go see her, we are encouraged to visit. Dennis Tingle. Okay. Are there any others? Yes. yes. Doris Smith. Doris Smith. And also, Vicki Dunn is on the ongoing, but she has taken a turn for the worst, and they really need our prayers. We will remember Vicki Dunn. Bless their heart. Are there any others? Uh, Lauren, Shelly Robertson. Shelly Robertson. Shelly Robertson. Yes. Okay. Are there any others? 
Let's bow for a moment of silent prayer and Dobbs will close. <coughs> Heavenly Father, hear our prayer and the prayers of those who call out your name. For there are those who are in need, and we ask that you place your healing hands on those that are ill with sickness or injuries from accidents. We ask that you provide comfort for those who mourn the loss of a family member or friend and provide them peace, comfort, and strength. We ask for your guidance for those who have lost their way and need a better path in which to live their lives so that they may know the power of your word and your love. We have faith, O oh God, that you hear these prayers and we will do our best to remain patient so that your will will be done within your time, not ours. We are an impatient people, Lord, for you know that as you see into our hearts and you know our needs far better than we. We pray that you provide safety for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, for the faithful believers in Christ Jesus are under attack for their faith, specifically in Nigeria. Just as you promised that we believers will suffer for our faith, for as they hate you, we will also be hated. We ask that you strengthen their resolve and put on the armor that you provide. We pray for the safety and well-being of our brothers and sisters who are first responders. We pray for the members of our armed forces who are given the task of protecting us from our foreign enemies. We pray for the caregivers who minister as a gift of love to the injured, sick, and dying. We pray for a just peace in the Ukraine. We pray for justice for Israel. We ask that you stand up strong men and women of faith to lead this country back to its founding principles that are found in Scripture. And we pray that the leadership of our nation, state, and local community follow your holy word especially in keeping with the sanctity of life, protecting our young from mutilations and the right to publicly worship freely while living our lives as Christ followers. Provide these leaders wise counsel that will guide them in a direction that will glorify your name. Lord, you have known us long before our presence on this earth, and we pray that when our journey ends here, that we will come home to you and your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's turn to number 662. As you stand to sing, stand up and bless the Lord.
please go forward. <coughs>
Well, here we are again, and I'm back. <laughs> it's, it's good to be back up here again. Today's message is about love. And 1 John, it's, it's been in, in the past few months that, that I've been re doing a lot of reading in 1 John, and that is such a rich, rich book. So if you haven't done your own personal study on 1 John, it's, it's really, I put it right up there with Hebrews. Hebrews, well, let me tell you, well, Exodus is pretty good too. So. <laughs> but our scripture lesson today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. It's a lot to read, but uh, it's, it's well worth it. But before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, let your words flow through your servant. Speak to your church and let the words inspire the faithful to action. Let the righteous believers take comfort in the message, and those who live for the darkness take heed. Let the darkness be replaced by the light that comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ. The scripture lesson for today, since, since I got it, go to someplace else. i got to keep my phone up here with the time on it, so just in case I go full Baptist on you, I can stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> uh, some of my friends take offense, but that's okay. This is a description of, of perfect love. A perfect love that is available to all of mankind. And God's love is of such a depth that even when we will be in his presence, we still cannot comprehend the width, the height, the depth of his love. It's just so vast. And you think about how each one of us God loves. Individually, he loves each one of us. But one day I was thinking, well, just how many people has he loved? So I don't do Google. I do Yahoo and web crawler and all that. I stay away from Google. That's a Chinese thing. <laughs> well, the others probably are too. <laughs> but it is estimated that 109 billion people, as with a B, have inhabited this earth. That's a lot of folks. So all the way from the, when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, there's been 109 billion people since the creation of the earth. Now, I doubt if that number includes those that, that did not or were not able to make it to full term. Because, you know, early days, uh, you know, miscarriages and all that, you know, that was, being pregnant was a crapshoot for a woman. And a woman had about a 50% chance of survival, even in the late 1800s, of a pregnancy. So think about how bad it was before then. So this, this number represents the ones that he, left, he loved before they left their mother's womb and then inhabited the earth. Some walked the earth for a long time. Uh, some came to an early end and some never even had a good start. But nevertheless, they all started out as a creation of our Father in heaven. Now, that's 109 billion now, but just think of those who are yet to be created and counted, who have yet to be born but they already have within them the love of God. So let's look, look at what, what uh, the Apostle John has to say. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, 
The love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins. I said, I've been practicing that word. <laughs> Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his, the Son as our Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he does not love, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. <coughs> That's a lot. But it's hard to shorten it. You can't shorten it because it is one complete thought. One complete <coughs> jewel that's within the scripture. Now, John MacArthur, who is a pastor out in California... Uh, has given five reasons for Christian love. But, and it really sums up all of that that I just read. And as we look at these, we are reminded that the fruit of the Spirit is love. And as we turn our hearts to God and we are born again, we become children of God because of His love given and our love received. Keep this in mind as we move through today's message. And the first reason is, God is the essence of love. If you want to know what love looks like, you will see it in the scripture. Because it's, it's, it's laid out perfectly for us. And love is inherent in all he is and does. The Apostle Paul also discusses Christian love in his letter to Thessalonica. When he tells the church that they should know how important brotherly love is to faithful witness. He reminds them that it is God that taught them how to love. And to use that love as an example for us. Matthew Henry reminds us that to know God is to know true love. True love. Those that don't know God, sadly, are lost to a cold and uncaring world without love. But can they be brought to know the love of God, even though they are ignorant? And yes, they can, because that's, that's our job, is to bring that love to those who don't know him. <clears throat> the next reason Christians love is to follow the supreme Example of God's sacrifice who sent his son for us. Now think about what happened to Jesus on that cross. Yeah, he suffered. But if you think about how he suffered, God poured out his wrath upon his son. Laying the weight of all of mankind's sin upon the shoulders of the Messiah. 
This act of love proves to all who see and hear and read the truth that the love of God in Jesus is given in despite of our vile and vain nature. Remember, there is a uniqueness in Christ that proves that he was the only one of his. That's with a capital H talking about God. Let me read this again. There is a uniqueness in Christ that proves he is the only one of his kind. There's only one Jesus Christ. There was only one Son of God. And throughout the ages, many, and we should do our best to imitate the sacrificial love demonstrated by the Father and the Son. Throughout history of the true faith, there have been many who gave up their lives to save others. And there are many brothers and sisters in Christ, even today, that are giving their lives up to save others and are being martyred for their faith in places all around the world who refuse to lay down their faith to save their lives. Isaiah foretold of this depth of love and sacrifice in chapter 9, verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So that love is never ending upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with just, judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He is always with us. He never leaves us. Christian love is, is an assurance of the divine habitation within us. That love that you show towards others shows that God is within you. And as was written by the Apostle John in his Gospel, the day we let Christ in, so we may serve him, we will know that as the Father is in Christ, he is in us as well. We won't see God living in us. For no one has seen God, but we do see the result of a changed person because his love is indwelt within us. The third reason Christian love is love is the heart of Christian witness. We are reminded that God's love has not been visible to mankind since Jesus ascended to heaven and returned home. Love originated in God. It was manifested by Jesus and was and is demonstrated by his people through their witness and sacrifice. People can see how you live your life. They can see by your actions whether God is within you. And as we would say, the light shines through you. John speaks of this visible witness and its effect on mankind in the following passage. And those that were there could see and hear and touch Jesus. We can't do that. But we can trust in their witness. And in chapter 4, verse 42, then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. But we know through the witness that's within God's word that Jesus is real and lives and lives within us. We are told to confess with our mouth. Confess your faith and witness to the world your salvation. And show the people through your example that your relationship with God the Father and His only Son is true and real and sincere. So many people will, you ask them, are you a Christian? Oh, yes, of course I am. 
they answer that like it's some kind of club. It's not a club. It's real. It's in here. It's in you. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And we are assured <coughs> that you will be saved. <clears throat> For without the resurrection, we would be wasting our time. If you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, you will be one of the children. And this leads us to the fourth reason Christians love, and that's because, because love is Christian assurance. God's love is boundless and essential, which is and is totally demonstrated through Christ and the Holy Spirit. We see his majesty in his creation, and that is but a small portion in comparison for what he has done for those who claim to be his children. We can claim to be his children, but he knows, like any parent, they know who their children are. As Jesus calmed the storm in the Sea of Galilee, he also calms the storms and fears within our hearts as we face our trials and tribulations. For as faithful followers, we're going to see hard times. Oh, we have it here. Nice in America. But even here in America, there are those that are being punished for what society sees as the sin of being a Christ follower. What has been and will be done is out of love that lasts for all eternity, which becomes the Great Commission through His love. There will be a judgment day. There will be those who will face judgment with confidence and a mature love. Their heads will be held high. With love, fear diminishes, and with knowing that we have a friend, an advocate in Jesus, we will stand before the throne with confidence. God stated that he was well pleased by his son. And John MacArthur notes that since we are God's children, we too will also be accepted. The fifth reason is Christian love. Christians love is because we have confidence in the coming judgment. Apostle James says in chapter 2, verse 13, for judgment is without mercy to the ones who have shown no mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. There will be those who will face judgment with fear and trepidation, with their heads held low, and they will be shown no mercy. There are those who claim to love God without, without loving their brothers and sisters in Christ. Those that claim to love God without loving their neighbor may be delusional. How can one love an unseen God but then you have your brothers and sisters that you can see, and you don't love them. God is love, but he's also a jealous God. God demonstrated this by his immediate judgment developed, demonstrated on those that you read about in Exodus and Numbers who went astray in the wilderness, disobeyed. Uh, as we read in, in those two books, we learn that those who turned away from the living God and towards idols or failed in doing what was right and pleasing to God earned God's wrath. It wasn't an accident. They earned it. Yet those that obeyed and worshipped and loved God Receive the blessings of being children of God. Because of our love of God, 
we have a new nature. And in turn, we are drawn to love our neighbors and are free of the chains that bind the unforgiven. In summary, God is the essence of love. Christians love so that they may follow the supreme example of God's sacrifice who sent his son for us. Christians love because it's the heart of Christian witness. Christians love because it is the assurance that we have. And the final reason is Christians love because Christians have confidence in the judgment that is to come. So, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> love is a special cornerstone of our faith. And it is essential in Christian salvation, witness, <clears throat> and preparation to stand in front of the judgment seat. Amen. Please stand. Our closing hymn is Bring Us Together, which is in the book. Jesus Christ in sincerity.